Good morning, folks. Top story circulating this morning is the huge discovery, a major breakthrough. Massive liquid water oceans under a water ice shell on Enceladus. Hmm. <sighs> Go the observers, as this is nothing new. In fact, Chapter 1 of Star Water, which came out 10 months ago, contains extensive coverage of even older material on the water on Enceladus. Some Star Water facts. Water is on every planet and almost every moon in our system. Yes, all of them. Pluto is mostly made of water ice. Solar wind squeezes water from rocks. There are going to be hundreds of planets far around most, if not all, stars in the Kuiper Belt regions. And with exoplanet breakthroughs, we can honestly guess that there may be half a trillion to a trillion watery spheres just in the Milky Way. Star Water, our number one series on the website. Okay, now we get to leave our galaxy and head to El Gordo. Very far away, Hubble and Chandra tag-teamed the cluster in astronomical and X-ray visibility, indicating the energetic sources that are difficult to discern if you just saw it with your eyes. That new island that formed near Japan is growing and growing, indicative of more volcanics. The official ice right up from the seasonal maximums and minimums, as most of you already know, near record low surface ice up north, near record high surface ice down south for the season. Always remember the difference between surface ice content and underside melting. Coming to the Solomon Islands where we're seeing the effects of another tropical cell that formed early yesterday. The western Pacific is active on the heels of the M-class solar flare. We're keeping an eye on both storms. Australia seeing a slight north shift to the vapor line as well. It'll be the same result below it. In Europe, we don't have any terrible systems. However, the air conditions are becoming hazardous in the UK via particulate count. Not good stuff to breathe in across the pond. Be safe, my friends. Meanwhile, the storm reports are coming in as the thunder begins to encroach my ability to narrate the news at this hour. Take two. We often discuss how equalization of the moisture, pressure, and temperature of these converging air masses is what causes the pop-up storms and the misery below. Let's take a look at what happens along those convergence lines where those air masses slam together. Pop-up storms are the result of that energetic interaction and equalization. There's going to be a lot more of it tonight. Let's start the space weather report with sunspots. Starting bottom right, we witness a complexing of the departing active region, becoming more of a proton concern at the limb than for Earth-directed coronal mass ejections. We see potential on the incoming spots, both north and south, but not any solid delta spots. Another M flare would not be surprising, but it would take a few hours of major mixing to make an X. As it is, we've had no big flaring, just tiny concurrent flaring that I've called chain reaction flaring since 2011, and which the experts, including Tony Phillips at spaceweather.com, are now recognizing a lot more. Simultaneous flaring. Dr. Phillips, care to engage in a discussion about the purported deep sun genesis of solar flares? How about a cometary destabilization mechanism via energetic release during disintegration? No? I. Anyway, while NASA is concerned about a CME from those tiny blasts and suggests a filament eruption will be more geo-effective than the M6 blast we've had two days ago and arriving tonight, folks, you can use your eyes, and I link SOHO for you every day in the About tab, you can see the M6 is the only burst visible. It's weak. I don't expect any significant impacts until tomorrow. Can't even spot the filament that's allegedly heading this way. And anything that does impact will be moderate. Meanwhile, the solar wind is gaining a slight edge as speed rises along with plasma temperature and green below. We don't have any major disruptions yet, but the protons are ramping. This is very different than a fast spike, remember, and the magnetometers are twitching as well. Next coronal hole is incoming on the Earth-facing disk. Power appears to be moderate in the north, but still strong down south. Tough to see him yet amidst the coronal particles obscuring the limb, but they're there. Let's hope for another calm day. Current conditions and shots of our start to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.